here's your host of Shaping Success, Wes Tankersley. What is up, everyone? Welcome to Shaping Success. I'm your host, Wes Tankersley. Today, our guest is Mark Morales. He is ran a theater pup company, has been published three times. He's working on his first movie and also has a TV series he's working on. Mark, welcome to the show. Ah, how you doing, Wes? Thank you so much. It's good to be here, man. Yeah, thanks for thanks taking for having me. Yeah, it's it's awesome to have you on here. Um, can you just give us a little bit of background before we get into your movie career and the things that you're working on and just kind of tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. Um, born and raised in New York. I ran a theater company called um, Edge of Insanity. I ran it with Kerry O'Donnell for a little bit and then with um, Jennifer Lieberman and Roxanne Policare. They came in. Uh, we did that for about five years. Then after that, moved to California, hung out, really just <laughs> hung out, worked. That was really it. And then um, I think I wrote another play out there, brought it back to New York. Which one was that? I think it was called Heartbreak. Wrote a play out there and did, it back, did that play in New York. Ended up back in California, finished out California, headed back to New York. Then we ended up in before we ended up in Texas. And when I was in Jersey, um, I would do a lot of open mics for stand up just to, to keep busy, <laughs> to keep oh, saying. So, so, really yeah. so you have a comedy background as well, huh? <laughs> I, you know what it is? All right, here it is. When I was in California, I went surfing. Now, people are like, oh, you surf? Like, no, I'm not. I don't surf. I'm not a surfer. <laughs> you know, I, I look at surfers as, you know, that's like a, that's a religion. It's a way of life. If you watch people surf, it's amazing. Me, I paddle out and hope, pray that I will catch a wave. So, um, so what, well, God, I, 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 I'm so sorry. I just blanked out. What was the question you just asked me? Oh, just, to, like, we were connect. just talking about how you had a little bit of comedy, uh, going on comedy. You did some stand up. Oh, yeah, so, you know, yes, I do. Yeah. I will go do an open mic, but no way do I consider myself a stand up or even close to a stand up comedian. You know, but no, yeah, open mic nights, I find them very safe and I will go and yeah, I, I will write out my material like I'm a, like I'm a seasoned, you know, comic and stuff like that. I will think very hard and, you know, take weeks to, you know, put it all together. And then I'll like even like run it by, you know, people first, like, guys, what do you think of this? And how, and I, you know, and then I will take an open mic stage. Like I was taking a, a Las Vegas stage at comedy club or something. Yeah. It's like, here it is. I'm here. <laughs> it took me months just to get up here and here's my minute and no one laughed. All right. Thank you. Got to work on it. Great. I'll be back. <laughs> that's it. That's it. Yeah. So it's a huge buildup for me. Yeah. So you're currently, no, a, I am. Yeah. yeah. So you're Go currently ahead. doing so writing and directing. And can you tell us a little bit about why you chose to get in that? Was there something when you were younger that just kind of drew you to that? Or is it something that you got into later in life? Just when I was younger, I was really into music. I, you know, I'm 50, so I, I grew up in like the 70s. I was born in 1970 and born through the 80s. So, you know, there was a lot of music. So first, I got into singing. I, I really enjoyed singing a lot. Uh, I even, when I was 18, I sang at the Apollo Theater and survived. Yay. That's, that, <laughs> right. Woo, that was fun. They got booed, but I didn't get thrown off. But um, so that was kind of cool. So I thought that was a big thing, and I kind of liked that. Then I found out that there was something called musical theater. <laughs> and I was like, oh, it's People sing and they act at the same time. So I kind of started doing that a little bit. And then I kind of left the singing to more to the side and started focusing more on the acting. That was kind of cool. And then I picked up improv and I started, uh, I, I formed an improv troupe in my early 20s called uh, Los Manditos Chocolate. They're now called the Nat Turner Review. Um, you can actually look them up. They still perform. Rich Jackson runs them. He's awesome. And I started with them. I did a couple of shows with them. Like I said, I did a little bit of stand up, some open mics. And I guess I just started writing. I, I was working as, as, as a singing waiter in, in, at a, in New York in, in the early 90s. And um, I had a lot of friends and very talented people. And we weren't really doing much. So I'm like, you know, I, I, I've got some things that I wrote. You know, maybe we can, like, since I already had the improv background. I knew that I could put together a bunch of people and some of my monologues that I wrote and do like some skits. And I knew how to, you know, I knew that we could take it to comedy clubs and, you know, for like maybe, oh, you know, we can rent out the club for like maybe 50 bucks or a hundred back then. 
for the night. And then, you know, you get X amount of door people. And if you, you know, you can make a little money, just enough to do it again. So we started doing that. And, you know, I was basically writing for everyone. And I was like, all right, this, I, I, I kind of dig this. And then all of a sudden it was just like, I wasn't writing. It was just like, you know, people were asking me questions like, hey, Mark, you know, what do you mean by this? And I'm like, oh, I guess I got to start directing now too. So all of a sudden, I guess it all took off from there. Yeah. So Let's the uh, writing and I want to rewind. A, I want to rewind back a little bit because I've never heard of this before. A singing waiter. What is a singing waiter? How does, is it just like it sounds? <laughs> it's just like it sounds. It's just like it sounds. Um, I'm not going to say. I'm. I will not say where it was, but it was in New York. Um, yeah, I'm not going to give them any sort of publicity. But yeah, it was at the time. It was fun. It was great you know, in my early twenties and it was, um, it started off as a, <laughs> it was like a fifties, uh, it was a fifties theme. So we were like, you know, the girls would kind of wear, you know, the, the jeans and they would look all fifties out. And we, we would like, like, look like it was fifties music we were allowed to sing. But then, you know, <laughs> some of their, everything was attached to like karaoke and we had big screens and, you know, we had microphones, the whole nine yards. And then, you know, we would, break out into song when you wanted to break out into song you weren't too busy and um but our big thing was you know the songs we were supposed to be singing all the discs were damaged and they oh, weren't geez. buying this new disc uh -huh. so it's like you know you want us to sing but you're not getting this new disc to sing on so we took it upon ourselves to start buying our own you know karaoke discs at colony music which was across the street yay and <laughs> um but we weren't gonna buy 50s music so that was the thing. It's like, if I'm going to buy my own disc. We're going to start buying what's kind of cool. And like, I think Backstreet was kind of cool right back then in the yeah. 90s and Backstreet. So all of a sudden we went from this, you know, the singing music to singing, you know, you know, it's quit playing games with my heart, you know, and yeah. So <laughs> we started doing that. Yeah. yeah. So yes, it was just like what you would think. Yeah. Breaking out into song, climbing on, you know, the chairs and the tables and singing. Yeah. It was, I used to call it Disney World on acid. <laughs> That's, yeah. It gave, you, it, it gave you a little bit of, um, a little bit of stuff to talk about <laughs> in your comedy, yeah, it was probably. Great. Yeah. It, it was great. And I never talked about it. It's funny. I, I really don't talk about it at all because for me, I'm just like, oh, I really don't like the place. But, you know, you, know, you laugh at it. So I'm like, okay, yeah, I, I, that's cool. You know, if you're digging it, I guess I can talk about it. Yeah, it's kind of cool. I, it's one of my best friends today. I've known her for like, God, over 15 years already. And we work there together. Yeah. And, you know, so, you know, we really don't even know either. We never, it's rare. We talk about other things. And everyone's like, remember that time? It's like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That was kind of cool. It was a really like Disney character, you know, not in costume. Right. And kind of cool too because <laughs> we would know each other's moods. So, you know, so, you know, our audience was sitting there, you know, Paige was going, oh, this is great. They're singing these songs and that's so pretty. And they're singing, this one's singing The Rose by Bette Midler. But meanwhile, it's like, yeah, she's singing The Rose by Bette Midler because her boyfriend just broke up with her last night and this and that. And we like, you know, we knew the backstory and everything. So it's like, so we're sitting there going, oh, oh, it's so horrible. And then, you know, you see all these people singing, hey, that's someone can we get a picture with you and it's like yeah sure you can have pictures <laughs> my dog just died and yeah sure yeah, oh man kind of cool <laughs> so one of the other things fun. that we talked about is you've been published three times can you tell us kind of about what what you've been published for and and how that went for you oh yeah that's pretty awesome um I, like I said, we started a theater company first with um, Kerry O'Donnell. It was Edge of Insanity. We worked at a horse trade theater group, which is still there. It's on East 4th Street in Manhattan, downtown. They do the Fridge Festival. It's like a winter thing. And Erez Ziv runs, the, um, runs horse trade, which he's an amazing person. So if you ever have time, you know, look up Erez, look up horse trade, an amazing place. And uh, we used to be a resident company with them. So basically they... Uh, they took us under their wing or, you know, if you were, if you were a young driver and you're under your parents' insurance, it's called an umbrella policy. <laughs> <laughs> that was basically the same thing for us. We were under their umbrella and we worked things out in trade. So, you know, we would help build sets. We would get stage time. We would put on our shows. Boom. You know, we would split 
the box if there was any money. Um, but we started there and we started, you know, like I said, I was writing just skits. It was like, you know, it was a Wednesday night thing. That was our weekly thing. We'd go there, write some skits, and we'd try our thing. And then one day they were just like, listen, you know, that's kind of cool. I hope you guys got that out of your system. We need an actual play from you. So I'm like, oh, my God, I never wrote a play before. Holy cow. And they're like, you know, you get X amount of months, you know, let's see what you got. And I wrote something called Galaxy Video. And it's basically it's about a video store, um, basically on the cusp right before DVDs were taken over and they just didn't want to go that way and they were fighting off the DVD. So, um, and I just based it on my life, you know, growing up, your videotapes, you know, we watched the video store, you know, the video store was born back, you know, when I was a kid, we watched right. it happen right in front of us. And my friends and I would just, we had a video store called Five Star Video in our neighborhood before Blockbuster ever existed. And we would just go there. We didn't even have VCRs. We would just sit in there like it was a library and look at these movies, like we read the back of the boxes and we would just sit there and the, and the owners would just let us. They're like, all right, let's let the, these kids sit here. You know, they're not outside doing anything bad. And then eventually our parents just gave in and bought us VCRs and you know, the rest is from there. But it was, you know, I had to write my first play. I'm like, everyone is always like, write what you know. I'm like I know movies, I think. And I know, you know, my life kind of growing up, let's write about that. So I wrote Galaxy Video and like I said, had great producers on it, just had a great team, had an amazing team and everything just, it, it went right. Everything was, the way I see it, everything was perfect. Production wise, everything was perfect. And in the end, uh, Martin Denton had, what did he have? I forgot what it was called, but he had a publication. He had a book. Um, um, what's it called? Something, playwrights, um, something, yeah, playwrights, whatever. And he had a series of um, books and he was like, hey, I want to take your play and put it in this um, collection of plays. And I was like, that's amazing. Thank you so much. So that was our, the first time it got published. Then the second time there was a monologue from Galaxy Video, which is called the Angry Employee Monologue. I think that's what people have labeled it. You can go online. People do it online. It's kind of cool. Every once in a while, I'll look up. It's like Angry Employee Monologue and someone's doing a monologue. <laughs> and, you know, then that got published. And then years later... I always say, you know, I never wrote a screenplay until, you know, 521 North Main Street, but that's a lie. I wrote something called Tuesday just for shits and giggles once. And, you know, it was my way of dealing with 9-11. And Martin, the same guy who published um, Galaxy Video, you know, he's read it. And he was like, you know, I know this isn't a play, but, you know, I want to publish it in my publication, even though it's just an anthology of plays. I want to put this in there. So I was like, oh, thank you. Okay, cool. So, yeah, there you go. All three. <laughs> so you That's talked up, a little yeah. bit about what was going on. So you've got those three published and now you're working on a movie and a right. TV series, right? What are, what's, right. tell yeah. us a little bit about the, let's start with the TV series and we'll move on to the movie. All right. Well, well, technically there's no TV series without the movie. All right. The movie is okay. 521 North Main Street and we were supposed to do it last year, but we got sidetracked by COVID. So I'm basically sitting in the house with nothing to do and, you know, feeling sorry for myself, I came up with an idea for a web series and basically just to keep me occupied too. And it was called, it's called, it's crazy out there. That's the name I gave. I'm like, it's just crazy out there. It's the way I feel right now. It's, it's crazy out there. I'll write this web series to why I'm sitting in the house doing nothing. And I'll basically, the first thing I did, I gave myself, you know, rules, which I never really did before. And one rule was Mm -hmm. um, each episode could be no less than 15 pages and no more than 30 pages. I'm like, okay, that was my first rule. And then I just like, what's it about? So I'm like, it's all right. It's about this guy and he's just living and it's basically, it's 10 years future and COVID has become something else. And it can turn you into like one of the infected from 28 days later. So, and people are just living with this now and everyone has a gun and people go to work and they're working from home and, and he's just living his life, just living his life and his friends come over and, you know, and he shot his girlfriend because she turned and he's dealing with that stuff. And he's also, you know, he's a writer too. So he's trying to like get some work as a writer and he has his agent and his friends come over and they're just a pain in the butt. So I always say it's kind of like Seinfeld meets 28 days later meets, you know, um, 
I forgot what else. Um, uh, I forgot what the other site I connected to. Yeah, so that that's what it's about. It's it's just him and his friends, and you know they deal with their daily crap and chance of getting infected and dying or becoming you know one of <laughs> something from twenty eight days later. Yeah. Oh, and there's no more. What is there? There's the internet's still there, but you, there's no more Grubhub or there's no more food delivery. Uh-huh. You can't do it over the internet anymore because you know the internet needs to be safe. More important things in the future. So basically, you have to call on a phone. You have to call restaurants again, and you know order your food, and the restaurants will drive them to you like they used to. And um, so, res- um, drivers and it's crazy. They make a lot of money. They're just like gods and they're, you know, they're better than cops and they're crazy. So, yeah. So there it is. Yeah. And so where are these out right now? Are they, are they anywhere? Are they out yet? Or you're working on getting them sold right now is what's going on? Yeah. It's crazy out there. We have three episodes of it. We are cut, finishing editing episode one right now. And the goal is just really simple is to try and just to sell it to Amazon or to Netflix or someone. And if you can't do it, then, you know, we'll just throw them on YouTube. But, you know, a lot of time and energy. My, my, my original plan was, you know, oh, I just want to, I just want to throw it up on YouTube. But then after, you know, like I said, I never did made a movie before. I never made a web series before or anything like that. So when I started putting the time into it, like the production time, I'm like, God, this is a lot of work. <laughs> and, you know, everyone, you know, works so hard. I'm like, I don't think I just want to throw it up on YouTube. I'm like, let's see what we see if we can sell it. Let's see what we can do, you know, because I feel you know, if you can sell it to Netflix or anything else, you know, everyone who put their time into it, at least more people will see the actors that are involved and see how good they are and just see everything else. I'm like, let's just give ourselves a chance. So right now we have three episodes of it. We're just about finished cutting the first episode and we're going to try to see what we can do with it. And if we can't, then we'll finish cutting the other two episodes and we'll throw those up on our website and, you know, have a party. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> see if everyone enjoys it. So let's yeah. talk a little bit about the movie because you said they go hand in hand. In the right. M- so tell us a little bit one, about that. Yeah. 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 Without um, without 521 North Main Street and basically, yeah, it's crazy out there. It would never have been born. But 521 North Main Street, it's like a... A group of wannabe ghost hunters, not even just friends that hang out with each other and they go looking for ghosts and um, they go to the Clown Motel in Tonopah, Nevada and end up conjuring up this these three demons who like dressing as clowns. And I stress they're demons because I don't find clowns very scary. And it's like, well, Mark, then why don't you write something with clowns? Um, like, I just felt I needed to. But um, <laughs> I really, I you know, it, it's... I, Honestly, it's like a voice said, you need to write this. And I'm like, okay, I'll write it. <laughs> I didn't think anything was going to be But I don't find clowns scary. I don't. I find them creepy. Uh, so, you know, I was going to have them on the poster, but now I'm like, maybe I shouldn't put them on the poster. And then I'm like, maybe I should put the demons on the poster. Now, every time I talk about it, it's like demons first. They're always demons. And the demons will decide to get dressed up as clowns. But yeah, I want to put demons in people's heads instead of clowns. Like I said, I don't think people find clowns scary. I find they find them creepy, and they're, they're kind of a turnoff. Kind of, a, you know, unless it's It by Stephen King. Yeah. But other than that, you know, how many other clown movies have you know people people sit around talking about going, "That was amazing. Remember that clown movie? You know, that person. You know, remember when Pacino played that clown in that movie? It was amazing. You know, it, it just doesn't happen. You know. Yeah, and It, you've got the demon clown. So there you go. You got the combo. Right. <laughs> It's a demon, exactly, and it, you know, it, there, 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 there was so much wind at, you know, the, same. you know, Tim Curry played it back in the day. It was a book first, you know. It has all this stuff behind it. Yeah, my movie doesn't have anything behind it. Yeah. <laughs> There's just, you know, you know, Tim Curry didn't play anything in this. You know, it's not a remake. You know, it's it's, it's flying out there by itself. So yeah, so I don't know if I answered your question. That's yep, what it's about. It. Yeah. Okay. And when's it when's it coming out? Has it is it out already, or is it coming out shortly? No, we haven't even started shoot. We like we were supposed to shoot it last April. Uh-huh. Then we didn't because of COVID. Then we started shooting. It's crazy out there, and I ended up. We had a crew for Five Twenty One North Main Street originally, but then when I, I put together another crew for It's Crazy Out There, and when I saw this crew 
the word you guys know a lot with what you're doing and i don't know anything and you know i would spend time with these guys and we would talk and they would tell me things and i would ask questions and then we started discussing the film and i told them you know they're like well you know who are you going to go out with? and you know what was this and they're like you know that came to all the things and they would look at me and go you know that's not your job <laughs> i'm like i didn't know that and next thing i know i'm like you know we have the opportunity to go out and do the movie and i'm like this is the crew i want to take because I know them now, you know, I, I, this is, I kind of consider them my family at this point because, you know, they're honest and I feel comfortable and it, it all comes down to that. You just need a great crew. You need a great team because without anything in theater with any of this, if, if you don't have any of that, you might as well just go home, pack it up because you're not going to do a good job. That's just my, opinion, but yeah. that's how I feel. So, yeah. So, you know, one few crazy out there helped 521 North Main Street. 521 North Main Street helped. It's crazy out there. Yeah. So the show is a little good. bit about helping other people learn how to do kind of what you're doing and or whatever, how you deem success. What advice would right. you give someone who wants to get into writing or directing or show business in general? For writing, I, what I have to say about writing, just do it. Just whatever you got in you just let it out just I remember when i first tr started writing or i tried writing i'm like you know i'm, I'm like oh i'll write this and all of a sudden i'd write things down and go oh i can't write that does that mean i'm crazy if i write something like that you know i started getting in my own way so i guess it's not even with writing it's just with anything just get out of your own way you don't know what you can do you you don't know how far you can push yourself you know, when i first started theater you know, I was fortunate enough to have, you know, someone who was dri very driven. And when there'd be times when she'd be like, okay, you know, we're going to have to like, you know, work until 3 a.m. tonight to get this done. And I'd sit there going, I don't want to work till 3 a.m. I'm tired. And she's like, yeah, well, you know, it's this or nothing. You know, it's what do you want to do? That's what she said. What do you want to do? Do you want to do theater or do you want to go to sleep? And I'm like, I, I want to do theater. And then she was like, well, that's it. So, you know. And I, you know, because me, I was like, I need to go to bed. And then all of a sudden I realized I can, I can go to 3 a.m. I can go to 4 a.m. I can go to 5 a.m. And because I got out of my own way. Like I said, you just don't know how far you can go until you get out of your own way. So whether it's with acting or anything, just throw it all out there. See what hits the wall. If it sticks, it sticks. If it doesn't, it doesn't. I mean, as with, with acting going, with act, you know, when I work with actors, I always tell them, I'm, they're like, what do you want? I'm like, I want you <laughs> just throw everything at me, throw everything, throw the kitchen sink, whatever you got, no matter how silly you think it is, just throw it all at me. Because if you throw that at me as a director, I'll catch it all and I'll pick at it and go, all right, let's throw that away. Let's throw that away. And then we mold it and then we can create from there. So for, you know, actors, that's what I, that's what I say to actors, just throw it all out. Then if you have a, you know, a director who knows what they're doing, they're going to take it all and they're going to mold it. And then boom, you guys are going to have you know, a great character. And as far as directing goes, just have a freaking open mind. We don't know. Well, in my opinion, we don't know everything. I have an opinion just like everyone else. But, you know, when it comes to it, and I have other people around me, yeah, I like to know what they think. So, you know, if someone's, some actors, you know, making a choice, I'm going to sit, I'm going to listen to them. You know, and then if they can explain to me, like, this is why I did this, this is why that, I'm going to be open and go, yeah, that works. That's kind of cool. So, yeah. I, well, it, I, I tend to babble. No, you're good. You're good. You got it. It's it's great to kind of get that insight because there's a lot of people who are working through that and they just need to know what they need to do. But the big basis, what I'm taking away from that is you have to do it. You can't just hope yeah. it's going to happen. You got to you gotta do it. Whatever it is, get out there it. and put yourself out there. You know, if someone offers you something and I... Like, as I'm 50 now, there's been so much over the years that people are like, hey, how about this? And I just didn't trust anyone. So I'm like, no, nah, that's okay. That's okay. I don't need that. But finally, you know, this one, this opportunity really came, the way I say it, came knocking at the door. And I'm like, I can easily say no, or I can take a chance and just go for it. So let's see what's going to happen. And, you know, some of it's been stressful, not going to lie. <laughs> You know, like I said, when it's not your money, it's tough. It's right. tough, but it's not my money, but I'm the one a lot of people are looking at going, you know, is this going to have, what, you know, is this happening? What's going on? We need this and we need my, so, you know, I'm the person they have to go through. 
to get to get the money, even though it's not my money. So right. you know, so it's hard. But you love it, you love it. Anything's hard. Relationships are hard. Everything, you know, you just gotta stay in it. If you don't yeah. want it, then walk away. But if you love it, yeah, <laughs> you're in it. You're in it for the long run. It's like a relationship. It's like you know, sometimes, you know. Significant others are crazy. Your wife, your your, your husband, <laughs> your girlfriend, your boyfriend. Things get a little loony, but you don't run away, right? Because you, know, you love them, yeah. and that's part of it. I well, we've easy got... and long. Okay. Oh, no, you're all right. <laughs> it makes sense. <laughs> all right. Well, we've got one last question for you, but before we get to that question, I want to just kind of give you a chance to kind of tell us where we can find you. Where's the best place to follow you, contact you, anything like that? Okay. What do I have? I have my Facebook page. We have highfiveandanceproductions.com. We have the website. If you go on there now, you could, what do we have up there? I think there's a, the original trailer for It's Crazy Out There. We have a new trailer that we don't have up yet because we don't know the rights to the song. It's um, What's Up by Four Non Blondes. It fits oh, so yeah. perfectly, but we don't own it. But, um, so there's stuff about It's Crazy up there right now. Nothing about 521 North Main Street yet. And I think I'm on Instagram. I think I'm not even sure I'm on Instagram. You're and on Instagram. I've got it scrolling on across the bottom. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I okay, found you. There it is. <laughs> there it is. Okay. I'm on Instagram. Yep. <laughs> and there, I think there's an IMBD page yet, but there's nothing on it. Yeah. You know, people are like, why is there anything? I'm like, I don't, you know, until, you know, there's something on the screen until the movie's made until, you know, things are on TV. I don't put anything on. There's some people, if you go on their, their IMDB page, it's just all these scripts, scripts written, 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 but nothing's produced. So I'm like, oh my God, I, I can do that. <laughs> but, and I'm like, no. And part of me, honestly, I just don't know how to. Yeah. I think I have to hire someone to do it. But yeah, but th- those are the ways they get me. Um, you can oh, you can go on um, alphaville2 at hotmail.com. That's my personal email. You can email me. Who knows? <laughs> Whatever. There you, there you go. Well, hey, I I do appreciate you taking the time to uh, share your story with us. We do have one last question that we ask all guests that come on the show. The show's about success and how you create that, as I feel it's different for every single individual. So how would you define success? What's the shape of your success? Are you happy at what what you're doing? That's it. You know, can you support yourself? You don't have to be rich, but can you support yourself? Are you happy with what you're doing? Are others around you happy with what you're doing? Everyone cool? Yeah, that, that's really it. That's that success. If you're good at what, what you're doing, you can support yourself and you're not hurting anyone. That's all good. That's my definition of success. Well, I love it because I think that in a lot of ways, that's really what it depends on is, are you actually happy in what you're doing? So that, that does make a lot of sense. So, well, the movie is called 521 North Main. It's crazy out there is the TV show. So it is a series. Yeah. Well, thank you for taking the time for hanging out with us, and um, I hope you have a great day. You too, man. Thank you so much. It was awesome. Yep, no problem. All right, everyone. Well, that is the end of the show. Until next time, I want to challenge you to find the shape of your success. Thank you. 